praise God, praise God, praise God. Do you know what today is? Mother's Day. Woo! If you are happy to have a mother, if you are happy to be a mother, if you are happy to be a mother, please give a great hallelujah to mothers in the house. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory. You know, it's not easy to be a mother. Honestly. Mommy, we love you so much. Wherever you are listening to this sermon, listening to this service, we want to tell you that today is your day. We love you so much. We are proud of you. To all the mothers all over the world, we want to say thank you so much for being there for us. When we cry, when we crawl, when we are hungry, you are always there for us. Thank you so much. We are proud of you. And we want to say we will keep making you proud. Thank you, mommy. We love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. May God keep keeping you all the days of your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please upload for mommies. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So we're going to pray. Oh, Father King of glory, we just want to thank you for today. Woo! Lord, you are so grateful. Today is Mother's Day. Thank you, Lord, for all the women, all the mothers all over the world, Lord. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the mothers in this church, AOM, Lord. We are saying thank you for giving us wonderful moms that we can lean on. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for keeping them. For wisdom. For encouragement. For giving them a greater shoulder to carry us. Thank you for giving them the womb to carry us. Father, we say thank you. Holy Spirit, we hand over the service unto you. Come and partnership with us. More of you and less of us. Take charge. We don't want to go on our own program. We want you to do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you ready to rejoice this morning? Hallelujah. Yeah. All the mothers in the house, can you shout unto God this morning? Female, woman, all the women. All the women in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So we are AOM and we just want to extend Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers all over the world. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We are here to give God praise. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go. Thanks unto you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. 
Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. We come unto you as we empty ourselves on this altar, hallelujah, to worship you.
no one can worship you for me.
of my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. We praise your name. We bow down and worship. Yeah. We bow, we worship, 
to the Lord. Hallelujah. What an amazing time of worship. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a big blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who is excited for today? Who is excited for Mother's Day? Hallelujah. Today is a special day. Today is Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. And that is his nature. Amen. Amen. Wow. Happy Mother's Day to all the women in the house. Hallelujah. Can we clap for them? Let's clap for all the women in the house. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Now, before we go into the message, we're going to have a very short video that will introduce the message. And it's my honor to introduce the speaker for today, a woman I love so much, a woman who is on fire for God, someone who is a mother to so many people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Amen. 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 Let's clap unto Jesus as I welcome Pastor Helen to bring the word for us. Amen. Let's take this Bible verse. It's the main scripture for today. From the book of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Amen. 
Let us pray. Father, Lord, we want to invite you this morning to come and have your way. Holy Spirit, I hate myself to you, and I ask that you have your way. May I not speak the word of my own, but may I be in tune to your voice and speak only what you want me to speak that will transform and encounter lives this morning. Come have your way. Let it be all about you at the end of it all. All glory, honor, adoration be pointed to you and to you alone, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus, for your love that you demonstrated for us in the cross of Calvary. And that is what has chosen each one of us. And we are glad for that amazing love. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. It's a special day. Welcome to AOM. Thanks for joining us online. This is a special year for us, our year of kingdom advancement. And today, it's a unique and special day. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know why today is special? <laughs> today is special because it's Mother's Day. Amen. I want to celebrate all the adult women in the house. You are doing an amazing job. You are imparting generations both to your biological and spiritual daughters. We are all mothers. Every woman is a mother. Let's celebrate the women in the house. Hallelujah. God bless you for your heart of service, for your sacrifice, and all that you are doing for the kingdom is well appreciated. The Lord celebrates you this day. May we celebrate all the women in the house. Amen. Mothers love sacrificially. Mothers are known for their sacrificial love towards their children. A mother can go to any extent to do anything for her child. That is who mothers are. They sacrifice so much. Even when it's not easy, even when it's not convenient, even when they are tired, even when they are overwhelmed, they still push on. That is the heart of a mother. And I want to celebrate all the women. God sees your heart of service, and God sees what you're doing in the kingdom. And God sees what you're doing in your time and the generations to come after you. Because even when you leave, your legacy will not leave. May we celebrate mothers again. <laughs> By the special grace of God, this morning our sermon is titled, Sacrificial Love. Sacrificial Love. Amen. When I was thinking of this word, sacrificial love, it just points me back to the cross. It just points me back to Jesus, how he came all the way from his throne to be born into this earth. He who knows no sin, to went through what he went through for our sake, that we might have freedom and liberty in serving the Lord. He did it all for us. That is truly sacrificial love. It was demonstrated by him. He finished the work already in the cross. And he demonstrated it and he wants us to follow the same step as his children that has been called into the kingdom. Sacrificial love. Amen. Is our sermon this morning. In the book of 1 Corinthians, that is why you will see it. They might refer you back to Galatians 5, 22-23. It's mentioned there, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit can only be realized by love. If you remove love, it's not effective. Whatever you do without love is meaningless because it will have no impact. It's love, the little love you showed to people is what we stand in Tana. Even when they depart, they will always remember that art of love. And it's being referred to us in the book of Galatians with all the miracles and all the signs and all the gifts. If you remove love, it's worthless. Jesus demonstrated sacrificial love for each one of us. And we should also do the same in the kingdom. Amen. He has showed it. We, we, we didn't deserve it. We were not qualified. 
but he chose us and he qualifies us. If Jesus looked at us at the stage where we were when he picked us, if he reasoned like us, maybe we wouldn't have been picked if we are Jesus. But he overlooked all those things and he said, I know, I know the way you are. I know you're messed up. I know you're not who you're supposed to be, but I still love you and I called you to come into this kingdom. That is what sacrificial love is. It's not for the qualified ones. For the unqualified, he calls and he qualifies them. Amen. In the book of 1 Corinthians 13, he spoke about love. This, this love in this book, still what chapter? Chap, between chapter 12 and 14, the spiritual gift it's pointing back. The word agape means sacrificial love. That is simply what agape means in this book of Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, he mentioned the following. The gift of tongue is nothing without love. The gift of prophecy is worthless without love. The gift of knowledge is useless without love. The gift of faith is harmful without love. The gift of giving is nothing without love. What is he saying? Love is the key. Love is the key. If there is anything you should desire, desire to have love for one another. That is the key. If you like, you prophesy from tomorrow, today to tomorrow, without love, it's useless. If you like, you speak in tongue, without love, it's useless. Love is the key. Could you turn to someone and say, love is the key? Love is the key in this kingdom because it has been demonstrated by our Father. Jesus demonstrated it to us and he wants us to do the same. Love is the key. May I move to my first point for today. Sacrificial love is gracious. Amen. It is indeed gracious. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy. Yes, what is patient? Patient is the capacity to endure trouble, suffering, pain, without being upset. upset. Are you upset with one another? Are you upset with people's character and attitude? That is not what God wants us to do. But God rather wants us to give everyone a benefit of doubt and give them opportunity to grow. We are all in the kingdom, but we are not equal. Some are at the beginner's level. Some have arrived. Some are in the middle. But we have to understand that we are in different levels. If we understand that in the kingdom we are in different levels, but we are still family, you'll be able to embrace everyone with love. So it's very important because the tendency for you to begin to ask, why will this person do this and he's born again? Yes, we are in work in progress and in different levels. When you understand that, you'll be able to work peacefully with people in the kingdom. We are family. We are one family because we belong to a kingdom. The kingdom that I cherish so much, that is where we belong to. And we must do it all to be patient with one another. Be patient. Bear with one another. Torolate. Give a, check on, a second chance because Christ gives each one of us a second chance. Even though we are saved, at times we we'll still go back. He picked us up and he still loves us. May we do the same in the kingdom with one another. And God will look at you and smile and say, indeed, you are a good son. You are a good daughter. You learned very well from me. Amen. Sacrificial love is kind. Are you kind to people that God brings your way? Let's be kind to one another. When you look at the word kindness, it's being friendly. Being kind to people. <laughs> it's easy to just say, be kind, be kind. It's beyond that. When reality becomes reality, are you kind? Do you choose to be kind when everything is perfectly and is rosy in your difficulty? Are you kind? If you want to get everything you, you need in life for you to be kind to people, maybe it will be late for you to show kindness. 
You have to start showing kindness even in your nothing. Even when you have nothing, the little you have, God is looking at you. He wants to see how you will use it to affect life. Yes, someone is in need. Do not look at them. Do not begin to ask questions. Why didn't you plan for this problem? Didn't you know that this is how will come? Show kindness without questioning people. Show kindness because when God showed you kindness, he did not question you. He did not look at what you did not do right and what you could have done. But he picked you and he showed you kindness and said, come into the kingdom and I embrace you for who you are. Let's be kind. Let's be kind to one another. Be kind to hear them, your fellow believer out. Hear them out in the kingdom. Be kind to listen. Be kind to be willing to journey with them. Be kind to embrace. Be kind to open your heart. Don't be afraid of being hot. It's okay to be hot. When you are hot, you get healed and you move on. May it not stop you from being kind. Some people will say, I was hot before and now I am I, I, I'm careful. Don't be careful for we belong to the same kingdom. Get hot and get healed. It's part of the spiritual growth in your life. If you can't get hot and get healed, then there is problem. It's okay to be hot. But get healed and move on. And keep loving people. Don't close the door. My mom once told me, when a friend I accommodated did something. And I was like, ah, how can she do that? And I was like, ah, I couldn't expect that this, this friend can do this. My mom said, may this not stop you from being kind. It's a teaching. Be kind to people. May one door not shut other people off. So do not use one thing that happened to shut the door of being kind. Let's be kind and God will rejoice when he sees us in that act of kindness. Sacrificial love is not envious. Sacrificial love will not ask, why is it her again? What is special about her? Every time it's her, every time it's he. Ah, ah, God, is it that you have forgotten me? Mm -mm, that is not sacrificial love. Sacrificial love celebrates when God is promoting the other person. Being envious is when you look at somebody's achievement and you feel like it's what you deserve. They don't deserve it. No, that is not what God wants us to do in the kingdom. Where you, at times, I will be rejoicing for people, bless them. They'll be like, why are you so happy like it's you? Yes, it's my sister and my brother in the kingdom. So as we celebrate, because the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoices. That is how you can tap into your blessing. But if you begin to question why, 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 you hinder yourself from being blessed. So don't go to that point of, hey, again, ah, every time it's her, it's her. Your day is coming for we all have our special day when the Lord will encounter you and remember you. And when God starts turning things around in your life, even you will say, hey, so God has me in the palms of his hand. He has every one of us. No one is forgotten, but the time is different. Wait for your time. Never be envious of people's progress, of people's achievements in life, of what God is doing in their life. Celebrate with them. For you will definitely be celebrated. That is how it works in this kingdom. So it's, be, it's very important. You tap into it and know that it, this is a, the way it operates in this kingdom. That is the only reason that you can celebrate with people. Knowing that ah, it's not about them. The Lord have chosen to remember them. Who is being glorified? The king of kings is being glorified. Who is taking all the glory of the thing that is happening? Is the king. So why do you want to question what God is doing? In Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgives you. Let's learn to forgive each other. In this kingdom, Forgiveness is very important. The reason why forgiveness is very important is that we were all sinners when Christ chose us and forgive us. So we must learn to forgive one another. I don't want to, I don't care about what has happened. I don't care about what they have done. But what I care about is that you have the heart to forgive, to let go and to say, Christ, forgive me. Even when I was down in the pit, he picked me up. He cleansed me. 
if he forgives me, who am I not to forgive others? Forgiveness is part of the important things you should look into in this kingdom. The Bible says, do not allow the sun to go down before you fix your problem. Settle it and move on. For God will smile and say, yes, you've learned well in the kingdom. Hallelujah, someone. Sacrificial love put others first. It put others first. Do you put others first? Or do you want to go first and everybody come behind me? Sacrificial love is putting others first. Amen. First Corinthians 13, 4 to 5. It does not boast. It does not proud. It is not, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. That is what it is. That is just it. It does not boast. We do not boast in our achievement. We boast in Christ. The reason why we boast in Christ is that we look at what is happening. We can count it that if not Christ, it's not possible. You can tell that if not God, if not God, what is happening will not be happening. All is pointed back to God because he is the one that has lifted you to where you are. And without him, you are nothing. So we do not boast in the things of this world, but we boast only in Christ, our Father. Amen. We are not proudful. We don't go around telling people, I, I have achieved this. No. You say, Jesus has done this in my life. It's just Jesus. I, I tell you the truth. Eh? If you know who I, who, who I am when Jesus speaks me, you can just see that this is the handprint of God. Because this wouldn't have been possible. Remove Jesus. It, it cannot be. Even me, I can imagine, I can feel it that without Jesus, it wouldn't have been possible. You point it back to the king of kings. That is how you glorify him. And you... Through that, you're pointing lives to Christ. Because you're telling them that this thing is, you, is done by someone I believe in. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's the one that made it possible. It's the tools for evangelism. You're pointing lives to Christ. You're telling them, oh. They say, ah, your time has come. Oh. Hey, now you the reign, no? Oh, as my people will say it. You tell them Christ is the one reigning. It's Christ reigning. It's not you. Because all has been possible by Christ and his mercy. And his, his mercy that has picked you up is what has promoted you. So don't be proud. From. Don't go around boasting. Don't go around publishing your achievement. We all know it. We will celebrate with you. But let it be pointed back to the king of kings. And his name alone will be glorified. Sacrificial love does not dishonor others. Yes, it does not dishonor others. Ha, at times, the spirit of dishonoring people will make you to begin to do what you're not supposed to do. You talk about them, you, sm you spoil them, you belittle them, nothing they do is good, they, how they are failures. What is speaking is spirit of dishonoring. Sacrificial love does not operate like that. It respects people. Sacrificial love respect. It respects people. It respects leadership. It respects authority. Sacrificial love has regard for authority. It doesn't matter who is your head. Sacrificial love we, we love. And know that at this time, God has put in him or her as my head. I will honor, I will support, I will, I will cooperate to work for the kingdom together. Sacrificial love does not dishonor. Sacrificial love does not point forth. But they are not good enough. Now, why is it? Mm -mm. Sacrificial love does not dishonor. When you begin to look at what people don't, didn't do well, you are dishonoring the, the grace of God upon their life. Give them time, for we all are work in progress. Sacrificial love, respect. Sacrificial love, honors. Sacrificial love, lift up. Oh, let's celebrate what God is doing in her life. We know when she found Christ. We know when she came. We can all see it that this God we have chosen is great. We can see what he's doing. You're joining to celebrate what God is doing, but you're not dishonoring. That is what sacrificial love does. Sacrificial love is not self-seeking. It's not self-seeking. If not you, 
is not correct. If not your idea, then it's not possible. It's not good enough. If not your suggestion, then it's not good. You are bossy. You want to be in control of everything. You want to be the only voice that will be heard. No, that is not how sacrificial love operates. It's not self-seeking. It's interested in other people. Give them chance to go. Give them chance to try. Sacrificial love is not self-seeking. It's not. Some people are too self-seeking that if they are in a meeting, they are problem. Before the meeting, you are even praying they should not come. <laughs> they should not come because when they come, every time, except everybody say yes. If it's no, you can see their reaction. You can see attitude. They give everyone attitude because they did not pick what they say. No. That is, see, at times we are quiet, not because we don't know what to do, but we are just trying to show love and say, you go. I know you go. It's not because some people are foolish that they let you go. It's spiritual maturity. That is where it comes in. Yes, we know that you're young, you're beginning, but we support you to go. Why? spiritual maturity. We want you to go. The way you become so bossy, you are the boss. You want to be boss even where you are not boss. You march on your leader and you say you are too small to lead me. That is not sacrificial love. Sacrificial love is not self-seeking. It seeks for other people's interests. It seeks for other people's interests. In the book of Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 3 to 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or envy, concept. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but each other interest. That is what God wants from you. Look out for each other interest. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. It's important. Are you helping someone because of what you will get? Or are you just honoring them to honor them? Do nothing out of selfish ambition. There is no blessing when there is something that you are expecting for be doing what you're supposed to do. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Rather, humble and value others above yourself above yourself does that mean that you are not valuable no that is maturity do not look to your own interests but each other's interests god wants you to seek the interests of one another that is love and that is how it operates in the kingdom. It's very important that you are in the kingdom. You learn the kingdom principle and how things operate in the kingdom. With it, you will be able to excel in this kingdom. It's very important. It's not how you think it works, but follow the pattern of the kingdom and the pattern of what the scripture has put down for us as example and walk through it. Sacrificial love is not self-seeking. And God will help us not to be self-seeking. Do you at times just feel like, why not me? Well, it's not a good spirit. That spirit is not a good spirit. If you have it, kill it with prayer and say, no, this is not of God. It's a foul spirit. And God will help us. Sacrificial love produces self-control. Self. Control. Say it to yourself. Self being in control. <laughs> you can put self in control in your life. You choose who to be in charge. If you choose self to be in charge, you will see the flesh wanting to magnify itself. But if you choose Christ to be in charge, Christ will subdue that self. And crush it out of you. And you can walk in humility. Knowing that Christ is the king of kings. You are nobody. But Christ make you who you are. In him. Amen. First Corinthians. 
13, 5b. It is not easily angered. It gives no record of wrongs. That is what sacrificial love is. It's not easily angered. <laughs> Do you easily get upset even when there is no reason for being upset? You, 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 you take it personal. Even little joke. Just someone says something, you take it personal. You do not just take it personal. You put it in the storage. You put it in the storage. You're waiting for time to pay back. Ah, that is not the spirit of God. It's not, it's not part of the kingdom. You see some people, they get angry so quick. You'll be wondering, ah, sister, Like, at times I'll be like, ah, is this still that, my sister? Because they get irritated with even things that are not so, they, should, they shouldn't be irritated about. Little thing. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I say, where is, the, where is the spirit of God in you that should help you to just overlook? There is what we call overlook. You overlook not because you did not see. You see, but you choose to overlook. It's a choice. It's a choice. Overlook. In life. That is spiritual maturity. To learn to, oh, I see, but I choose not to see. You ignore it. You overlook it. Do you know what it brought? It brings, it brings harmony. Don't easily be irritated with your fellow sisters. Even with the things that shouldn't be issue, you're making it look like something big. Meanwhile, it's nothing. It doesn't happen like that in our kingdom. Because if Jesus took it that way, ah, if he took it that way, he would have seen Peter denying him. But he refused to take it that way and he gave Peter the power to conquer and transform the world for our sake. Learn to ignore easily. You get to a point, you say, God, I refuse to allow my life to remain like this. After all these years in the kingdom, I can't be harboring this attitude anymore. Help me to learn to overlook. Do you think that people that overlook are stupid? They are not, but they are wise. It's wisdom that helps you to overlook. You don't go into fights that does not make sense. You overlook the fight. You say, I see you this fight, eh? But I'm running for my dear soul. My soul is important than you, this little fight. And you don't engage in that fight. You overlook it. <laughs> God will help us to learn to overlook. We need it in this life. We earnestly, did, did you ever at times see someone fighting you and you don't know that that person is fighting you? If you don't learn to overlook, you, you, you engage in the fight that you are not supposed to engage in. But learning to overlook will make you not to even see. And you have your peace. And you rather draw that person to God because the person will say, ah, something is different in this person. We are not fighters. May we not easily be angered. That is not how it operates in the kingdom. It's not of God. It's not of God. Hey, storage, eh? I thought storage is for packing things. <laughs> eh? Where you pack things? Eh? But people, some people have storage. Hey, hey, la, la, la. You will be like, hey, something has happened that many years ago. It's still in the record. I'll be like, what? At times, you know, I'm the kind of person that I don't know how to keep things in my heart. If I have anything with you, I will walk to you and fix it because my peace is important. If, we, if I realize that you don't greet me the way you are greeting me, I will walk to you and say, Sister, please, have I done anything? Please, if I have done anything, forgive me. I, honestly, the way I love my peace, the inside peace, when I, the peace I'm talking about is not this, the inside peace. I enjoy it so much. It means the word to me. So when I begin to sense anything, I try to reach out and make peace. Not because I do not know what I'm doing, but my soul is important. So when I see people keeping record, I'll be like, really? 
And what I'm sharing is not about just baby believers. You will see some people that are spiritually mature that you look up to. But they have those record of things that I will be like, Jesus, how are you praying? For me, I can't pray. I will struggle with praying if I have something in my heart. Let's learn to let go. Do not record things. What you need to record is testimony of God's faithfulness, of God's goodness. It's not of fight. It's not of God. It's not a good spirit. It will hinder you from your blessings. Bitterness will grow up. And that is not what God has called us to do in this kingdom. He has called us to learn to let go. Amen. Amen. And that is how we are going to operate because we are family. We cannot keep records of evil. Proverb 14, 29. Whoever is slow to anger has a greater understanding. Whoever is slow to anger have a greater, has a greater understanding. You are slow to angry because you understand how it operates in the kingdom. But he who has a hasty temper is not falling. He who has a hasty temper is not falling. Do not easily react to things. Learn to understand. Understand one another. Understand your fellow believer. We are all work in progress. I said it before. Some people are just that. See, when I talk of spiritual maturity, it's not about how many years you've stayed in the kingdom. Some people have stayed in the, in the kingdom 20 years. You see someone that is just in the kingdom one year. But when you look, you can see the growth that is happening in the one year life. So when we talk about these things, it's not that you begin to look, ah, but this person has been in church all these years. It doesn't matter. We are in different levels different spiritual level. Let's understand that. If we understand that, we'll be able to work with people in harmony. If we'll be able to work with people in harmony, in peace, because we are different, of different level in this kingdom. And we do not want distraction. See, my soul is important. This heaven that I'm talking about, eh? hey, I cherish it. Whatever I will do to go to this kingdom, I will get rid of all these distractions here on earth because heaven is my home. You can't keep things inside here and you say you are looking forward to heaven. It doesn't operate that way. Let's learn to let go. Press on. Press on. Move forward. No storage. We do not do with evil storage. It's of no good to the family. Rather, it causes problem in the family. Instead of family being in peace, it's fight. We do not want to see fights happening in the church. We want to be in harmony. When we stay together, we smile. We are joyful. We feel the true peace of God because we are family as believers. You know, it's true that at times we can match in each other's toes. The way your child do something, do you throw that child away? If you have that heart of a mother, at times your child do something that you'll be wondering, ah, is this one my child? Hey, did I give birth to this one? But you still embrace that child. You still pull that child close. Did you keep a record for that child? No. Because of that special love, that is how we should love each other in the kingdom. We should love each other. Love, it's important. Sacrificial love rejoices with truth. It rejoices with truth. Amen. It rejoices with truth. Let's rejoice with truth. Amen. First Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13.1, It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It rejoices with the truth. That is sacrificial love. It's important. Hey, it's important. You cannot compromise this thing they call truth. You cannot compromise it. It rejoices with it. Be a person of truth. When you see evil, call it evil. Do not paint it. Do not put some 
colors in it to make it look good. Heaven is heaven. This one is no go area. We cannot do this. It doesn't work like this in the kingdom. Call evil evil. Call evil evil. What it is should be what it should call. And that is how we will progress and we will love each other. Sacrificial love does not delight in evil at all. It does not delight in evil. What picture do you give evil? How do you accommodate evil to be able to suit? How do you, uh, how do you package it so people will see it and it will look presentable even when you know deep in yourself that it's not presentable, that this is evil? It's better to be alone and stand for the truth than be with the crowd and deny the truth. The truth is important. We are here to stand for truth as believers. Because we are going to reach out to souls. How do you reach out to souls when you code something to fit what you want that is not right? It doesn't operate like that in this kingdom. Sacrificial love speak the truth. You see evil, my sister, this is evil. You might like to hear it. You might choose not to, but I will tell you it's evil. And I'm not part of it. I'm not putting my hand in evil. I'm not going to support evil. I'm not going to approve it. I run away from my dear life because my soul is important. Be a person of truth. Speak the truth even when it's painful. At times it looks painful. At times it looks painful. But stand for the truth. The truth will set you free. Hey, the way I love truth, eh? I rather... <laughs> Somebody did something. And then I was like, you need to speak the truth. The truth will set you free. You hide this lie, this lie will come up. When this lie will come up, you will not like it. So speak the truth now and get yourself free from the future problem. And she went seeking other people counseling. And she came back. She said, I'm the only one telling her to speak the truth. I said, go speak the truth. Get your freedom once and for all. If you refuse to speak the truth, bet you me, write it in your diary. You will come back to regret you did not speak the truth. Praise God, she took that step to go and speak the truth. You get your freedom once and for all. Let's stand for the truth. Never you paint truth. But never you paint lie to feel like truth. Because evil is evil. Evil is evil, whether we accept it or not. Even if it's your close friend. Even if it's your partner, even if it's someone dear to you, if it's evil, tell them it's evil and save their soul for the kingdom. Remember, everything is point down to the kingdom and eternity. We do not want distraction from this race we are running. We want to make it into eternity. Sacrificial love rejoices with truth and not evil. Let's look at John 3.3. 3. In the book of John 3, 3. For I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth. As indeed you are walking in truth. Would that be your, may that be your testimony. May that be your testimony. May that be your testimony even when you are not there. That people can say, for this person, I trust her. She's a person of truth. Ah, for this person, ah, she can compromise truth. May that be your testimony. May that be your testimony even now on earth and after you are gone. Let me tell you, what you leave behind matters. What you leave behind matters. The seed you sow now matters. And let me tell you, I bet you it's going to germinate. If you sow the seed of truth, it will germinate. It will germinate to be a great tree that will give shelter to life. And let me also announce to you that if you sow evil tree, evil tree also grows. It grows to destruction. And we are here to 
to, to do the kingdom work and point lives to the kingdom. That is the reason why you should stand for truth. This populates have hell and populates the kingdom. That is what truth can do. Sacrificial love never gives up. Sacrificial love never, never gives up. Do you sometimes look at people and you give up with what you know about them? Do you sometimes look at people and you give up on them with just the story they told you? Do you sometimes look at people and you give up on them because of what you know about them? Let me tell you, give them a chance to prove it right for you. And you will be amazed at what God will use that soul to do. Sacrificial love never gives up. Sacrificial love is willing to journey with someone that is broken. Sacrificial love is willing to journey with someone that has been written off. Sacrificial love says, I know, I know, better than you know, but I want to work with you. Because I know you are work in progress. And I know that the Lord loves you. And I know that the Lord is interested in you. I take you for who you are. Come, follow me. Let's walk this process together. Let me tell you, you've sowed a seed that will populate the kingdom of heaven. Because when people feel rejected, many people reject them. They are looking for one person that will accept them. May you be that one person that will accept the rejected people and embrace them and show them the love of Christ because they will really understand. See, this love is a practical thing. It's not a say word. It's not just love, love. Me, I say practical. Practicalize it. Hey, you love it? Let me see it. I want to see it. How do you love? Do you love just with mouth? Show it out. When that your sister is in trouble, how well are you dear? Are you dear to journey with them? Or you say, ah, 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 you of all people and you run away. If we all run away, who will journey with her? Let's embrace each other and walk together because we all are work in progress. Sacrificial love does not give up. I thank God for my husband that he understands my heart and he supports me. When I want to do anything, he doesn't say no. He just gives me the support to go and help. And it has helped me to achieve, it's helping me to achieve my purpose in the kingdom. My husband never say no to any request that we populate the heaven, the kingdom. He said, go for it. And it gives me joy. It gives me joy when I can be a blessing to someone. It gives me joy when I'm working with someone. It gives me joy when I look back and I say, indeed, we did it together and we come out victorious. That is the joy of the love we speak about. Tell me you love people and I will ask you to share your testimony of the loves you have shared express to people. It means a lot to me. Do you love people when they are okay or do you love them when they are messed? Do you choose to love them when everything is looking rosy? What, what of when they were, when it was not looking rosy, when they were down, were you willing to pick them up? Or you abandon them and now they are coming up, you want to say I love you. Which kind of love do you preach? When you did not show action, when action was needed. Love is not a mere talk, it's action. And that is the one I believe in, the action part. The action part. Sacrificial love never, never gives up. First Corinthians 13, 7. It always protects. Hey, it always protects. Always trust. Always hopes. Always persevere. Perseveres. It's hard. The road is tough, but I'm going. It's not easy, but I am going. Right now, I am struggling. 
I do not have all I need, but I am going to go. I will do it with you. I will journey with you. I will give all the things you needed. My finance will go inside it. My food will go in. I'm ready to walk with you to this process. A sister got pregnant. She ran to my house. She said, oh, mama, I am finished. I said, you're finished? What happened? I am two months pregnant. I said, no, you're not finished. I'm happy that you came to tell me. It's my joy that you did not go to abort it. My daughter, who is the man? Is he willing to marry you? He said, no. I said, come. Come. We are going to nurture this baby. We are going to allow this baby come. We are going to carry this baby. And we are going to celebrate with you. Your life is not finished. There is still hope. I said, for the fact you did not go to abort this child, it's a joy. Because let me tell you, tomorrow you will look back and say, thank you, Lord, for this son. And praise God. Praise God. We journeyed together. We walked together. We went through the process. It was difficult. It was hard. I wouldn't tell you that it was easy. It was not. But today, I look back. I say, thank you. Thank you. Love is action. Love never gives up. If I had said, hey, all these things you are preaching in daughters of Zion, close your leg, close your leg. How comes? You went and opened your leg. No, that is not the time to preach that sermon. That sermon is not needed at that time. What is needed at that time is love. And say, come, my daughter. I understand how you feel right now. But we are going to go through this process. And we went through the process together. And it's my joy. Last month, she sent the picture. I said, ah, God, you're good, eh? He is faithful. Sacrificial love never gives up. In the kingdom, we easily give up on people. We easily write people off. Ah, this sister, did you hear her story? I don't care about her story. I care of what God is about to do now. And I'm willing to walk with her. There is a joy when you look at condemned, someone that was condemned, and you can see how God can turn them around for Christ. When those people impart lives, they impart greater lives because they are testimony of outcasts. And showed love too. They showed love extra mind. With extra love they give to people. Because they've tested of God's love. Sacrificial love never gives up. It never. Sacrificial love protects the image. Your sister come and she shares something very ugly. Protect her image by keeping it to yourself. She did not say go and make it a prayer point. Be shut up. Keep your mouth. If she come to share with you, it's something sensitive. It shouldn't be a prayer point to any other person. Only your ear here is keep it to your ear. And be willing to journey with that sister. Sacrificial love protects people's image. Protects their respect and dignity. Sacrificial love always trust. Never give up. Trust people. Trust, trust. Yes, even when they betray you over and over and over, still trust people and give them benefit of doubt. Do you know that times when you give somebody a benefit of doubt, they want to prove to you that I can do it better this time around. And by the grace of God, they will do it. Sacrificial love hopes on the best in others. Do you hope in the best in others? Hope for the best in others. It's important. Amen. Sacrificial love perseveres. This one, eh? This one. Ha ha ha. It's difficult, but we will do it. It's tough, but we will do it. It perseveres. It's not when all is rosy and you come and say you want to show sacrificial love. No. When it was, when it's tough, I want to see action during the tough situation. First Peter four eight. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sin. Yes. In conclusion, John fifteen three thirteen. John fifteen thirteen. Greater love has no one than this, that someone 
laid down his life for his friend. Greater love has no greater love has none than this. He laid down his life, his life, his life, his life for me and you. You have no reason to tell me that you cannot sacrifice love people because Jesus demonstrated it all. And my prayer is that we will learn to live sacrificial love out as believers. Amen. His grace is sufficient. God can use you to show love to people who are in need of love. Sacrificial love never gives up. It never gives up. I love the fact that it never gives up. That is the one that encourages me the most. It never gives up. It gives chance, second chance, third chance, fourth chance. It gives chance over and over. Sacrificial love never gives up. I love that fact. May we not, be, may we not give up on one another. May we love sacrificially. May we love sacrificially. We are going to be praying as the worship team comes. Be ready to pray yourself into this love that has been spoken about this morning. Into this love that has been preached this morning. Be ready. Be ready to tap into it. Ask God for grace. Ask God for the grace to sacrificially show love. Because his grace is sufficient. Remember that love is patient. Pray that God will help you to be patient with one another in this kingdom. God will help you to tolerate. God will help you to be patient with one another. We are praying, worship team. That is our prayer number one. God, help me to be patient. To, to, to remember that we are in the same kingdom, but we are of different level. Some are the beginner stage, some are the middle. Pray and say, God, help me. Help me to be patient. Help me to learn to be patient with one another. That we will be patient with one another in this kingdom. Lord, yes, that's our heart cry. We want to be patient. We want to be patient with one another. Yes, Lord, help us to be patient. Help us to bear with one another. Help us to tolerate one another. Help us to accept one another. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The second prayer point, keep singing. The second prayer point, love is kind. Ask God to help you to be kind. Ask God to give you a kind heart towards the people, the believers, and even people that are not yet believers. Pray. Say, God, help me to be kind. Help me to be kind to people. It's only God that can help you to be kind. It's only by the grace of God that is possible. It's not by your strength. It's not by your ability. It's not about what you can do. But it's only by the grace. Ask God and say, God, give me the grace. I need this special grace to be kind. I need the grace to be kind. I really want to be kind. And I'm praying it as a prayer point. Help me to be kind. Thank you, Jesus. It does not envy you. Pray and say, God, may I never be envious in the kingdom, but may I celebrate what you are doing in the life of others. Of everything, but may I let the world in Christ and in Christ alone. 
Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. I just want to just a few seconds to meditate on the Lord. He's well loaded. Love is patient. Love does not take record. We all had it all. I just want you to meditate on the Lord. He's well loaded. He's well loaded. Love doesn't keep record. It gives people time. It respects. Thank you so much, First Lady, for that wonderful message. May God keep using you. May God pour you afresh. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this word. Yes, indeed, time you will. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you. We can thank you enough. Father, we pray that you just give us the grace to love. Give us the grace to deeply love, to overlook. Give us the grace to respect, to take no stops. Father, Lord, help us. It's all about you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, I want to encourage us before I go into the sermon. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, everything. Please, you can watch and watch and watch. Don't wait until Wednesday to watch the replay. Watch and watch and don't be familiar with the Word of God because the Word of God speaks every second. Don't be familiar. I know you. everybody has been need, reading this book of Corinthians 13, but please, don't be familiar with it. I am so blessed that I watch it I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. I keep watching it. Thank you so much, First Lady. Praise God. Offering time. Blessing time. Offering time. Blessing time. So I want us to pray for our offering before we give other announcements. Please, the QR code is there. You can scan. You can give through Usher Basket. Let's pray for our offering. Father, King of glory, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because your word is A and enough. Thank you, Lord, for you have given us abundance. We are just giving you a token. Father, receive it as a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Thank you, Adonai. We give it all. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Offering, please. Praise and worship team. You can dance unto the Lord, even as you are in your house. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, so much for giving. May God pay you back immensely in the name of Jesus. 
So without no wasting time, let's listen to the following announcements. Every Wednesday, every Tuesdays, we are having our daughters of Zion and sons of Abraham. Please don't left behind. There are enough. If you want to hear enough of our first lady, join us. You will hear her so much and you will be blessed. Praise be to God. On Saturdays, we are having young adults. If you are young at heart, please, 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 these people are so wonderful. God is raising up anointed disciple makers. On Saturdays also, we have heroes. Children will not be left behind. Please join them as well. 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Please, we want to see you. Wednesdays, we have our replay. Don't wait also until Wednesday. You can watch and watch and watch again. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Please call your mother. If your mother is not around, call your mother. Buy a gift for her. There is no one like mother. Thank you so much. I call daddy. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Glory. Glory be to God. Amen. Let's, let's close in prayer. Just give God praise. Just appreciate God for today. Just give him glory for all that he has done. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we are so grateful for the gift of mothers. Thank you for blessing us with amazing women in this church, in our families, in our homes. And God of heaven, I just pray may you, Lord, continue to do incredible things in our lives. We give you all the glory. Father, I pray this week, God, as your people go ahead, may you continue to watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Remember, call your mother, no matter biological or spiritual. All right? Wish somebody happy Mother's Day. And God bless you. Have a great week. Let's show the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, His goodness and mercy shall come us all the days of our lives. And we shall go in the streets of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Remember, you can still join on Zoom. God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day.